Welcome everybody to Spurs Halloween 2022 investigation, starting with the Belmont Inn. We are in the town of Abbeville, South Carolina. We are taking over the city blocks for investigations all weekend long, different locations, different hotspots. There are nine hotspots inside of this hotel, 300 years old, ready to rock. This historic hotel was first established back in the turn of the 20th century and operated as a luxurious railroad accommodations for town visitors. Those who have stayed at the hotel have reported strange occurrences in a number of the rooms, including an entity that likes to open and close doors. The Spur team was invited to lead the investigation at the Belmont for the Upstate Convention where each member would lead a team of their own to collect as much evidence as they could. And he was telling me how to oh, check in stuff, and he looked at it and he was like, look at this, this just happened. Right yeah, I felt the pen prick, and you know, like, what the hell's going with this? Yeah. That happened right as I was talking. It's about 1.30. It does look like he got bit. Yeah. That looks like a bite mark. Around that it. is crazy. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's weird how it's shaped too, like if it was like this. Instead of there's, no, there's nothing on the other side. Right. Yeah, right. There's no other no marks. Huh. Yeah, I, plus, I, up in room 10, I got smacked twice in the ass last night. Seriously? Seriously. In room 10? In, in room 10. I'm getting ready for dinner, and my girlfriend was up there with me, and she sat on the bed. So I'm getting up, and I'm going to go out there and of course I'm in my box. And I'm going to go back there, brush my teeth, comb my hair. You know, yeah. I'm going to make myself presentable to everybody. Right. And I go back there, and all of a sudden, I turn around, I jump back, I'm looking at her. But you're sitting, she looks wrong, yes, you're sitting on the bed. She says, what do you mean? I said, you're sitting on the bed. And she says, and? And I'm like, are you feeling frisky? I, got, <laughs> you got I just go. got smacked on the ass. And she says, oh, don't start that shit. Ooh, no, no, seriously, I got smacked on the ass. Next thing I know, you know, I'm, I'm up there kind of stoned, I'm like, okay, whatever. I go take a couple steps, and all of a sudden, like a, like, like a softer tap, but hell the ass again, like, get moving. That's where I am. I'm like, you didn't get off a bed because I would have hurt. But here it is. I got, hit, I got tapped again. And then last night, while we were asleep, as I, as I came in there, I hit that bed, man. I was hit, hit the pillow. And that was it. Well, next door is, is Karen and, 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 and Dave. And they heard commotions going on in our room. Of course, we had the TV off, everything else. We're sound asleep, unless, unless I move something with, with, with my tremendous snoring, you know, going on, but that's what happened last night. But it was active up there last night, up there in that corner. I don't mean to scare you. <laughs> but 
th that's what happened, man. I mean, this is this is a, it, it, this is a perfect opportunity. Now you had now you prime had time. Prime time. Now here it is. It's the, the veil is thinning as we get closer to Halloween. All Saints Day on November first. Boom! Is that wall right there? You, and here's another thing I didn't mention. My my my, my lecture upstairs. You ever notice the smell on on Halloween morning? Go out there, go outside, and smell the air on November first. Tell me what kind of difference it has. The aura and the smells and everything. Do you notice any difference between those two days on the same time period? Yeah, it's like fresher. It's like fresher on yeah. November first. It's now that red wall. It's all thick. Marianne. Mm -hmm. Okay, of the Belmont. You work here? Yep, I've worked here for almost two years. Okay. And what have you experienced in the two years? Um, when I stayed here, before I worked here, I was staying in room 10, and I woke up in the middle of the night to what felt like somebody was jumping on the bed, and I chucked it up to, I was sick with salmonella poisoning, going crazy, and I asked my daughter the next morning, like, were you jumping on the bed in the middle of the night? She goes, no, but I felt it too, and that was the first of many. Um, I want to say two, three weeks ago I was in the kitchen, it was a Sunday morning and we were getting ready for Sunday lunch and I felt like what somebody grabbed my shoulder, like real hard grabbed me, and that happened two more times that afternoon. Somebody walked up and did this to him. And do what to him? They walked up to oh. people and did that. No. Like Daddy. straight up Darth Vader death grip. <laughs> Sister Talia! Sisters! <laughs> we got Sister Talia and Marie's so awesome. here. Yes. So, this is how they're introducing me, so, you know, because it's all proper and stuff. We got Hannah in the building. I would have knew we would have made it here three years ago. We got the bishop over there. A lot of other famous ghost hunters in here. It's pretty, pretty dope, man. There it is. I think we're all a bunch of creepy weirdos. <laughs> and I've already had five experiences, but this is what you have to deal with as a paranormal investigator. Those are the differences between being a ghost hunter and a paranormal investigator. There is a huge difference in people right there. All right. The ghost hunter gets the opportunity to show up somewhere and then they do something that they get the opportunity to have some live occurrence happen, live activity on site. They get freaked out, they get their little thrill, and they run away and then they try to live a normal life, right? That was their brown pants moments. That's what we call the brown pants moments. All right, that's the ghost hunter. All right, but the paranormal investigator sticks around after that and he steps up and into a new field. So it's all of y'all's time right now to have that brown pants moment, step up and make peace with it because it just happened. Y'all are in a very haunted location. Y'all are enjoying it because it's actually a very friendly place. All right, the occurrences that we've had since last night whenever we got here was very cool. It was very awesome and I will remember it for the rest of my life. Yeah. Okay. tonight investigating um, and we'll see what randomly happens.
a shadow figure and EVP were caught here. Now in slow motion. that it goes up and over apparently an island right here. And the girl that I was talking to, she said that um, on several occasions she's been grabbed on the shoulder to where it like left red marks. Oh, wow. So it's like someone was like getting her behind. So, um, I haven't been back there yet. Any spirits up in the kitchen up in here? Anybody? Show yourself. Open up. Huh? Open up. 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 To the sub basement, I guess, or like the basement and the sub basement. Oh, this goes down to the basement? I guess, I don't know. Me and Hannah on an adventure. In the kitchen. And I'm kind of hungry. Oh, yeah, I know. That's one photographer right there. Melissa catches a shadow figure in the window. As you can see, no one was in the dining room with her. You see they got one of these super old registers right here. Jesus Christ. Stuck on the phone with his wife. Looking like right at the stairs. Kind of feels like something's gonna come walking down. That's what I felt when I was uh, on the stairs. <laughs> I was just about to say, did you cut that off? Yes, I did. <laughs> Sign the book. Oh, hello. Where'd you go? You saw an orb? That's cool. Alright, 
right, so it is day two, Friday, and I'm headed down to go meet Stokes at the Opera House right now. Melissa was too tired, so I'm gonna let her sleep. It's about 4 p.m. right now, 4.30. I'm about to go over here and meet up with Stokes and uh, see how this goes. Wish me luck. Uh, we were here maybe about a month, month and a half ago. We did an uh, investigation at the Charles Dindy House. It's pretty interesting over there. Do you have someone staying in this room? Uh, yeah, that's that Ron's room right there. Mm -hmm. Why is that not surprising? Who's Ron? Ron, the guy who told us everything. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's Ron's room right there, and that's... So it's empty. <laughs> yeah, it's empty, yeah. Well, at least of living people, it's empty. It's not empty, by any means. Mm -hmm. I felt it when I walked by the door, but when you go to the top of the door, it goes off. Mm -hmm. Not as much, though. Yeah, this one didn't go up that much. Mm -hmm. This is not registering anything. Yeah, but there shouldn't be anything electrical in a door frame like that. In a in a B and B like this. Yeah. I'll say uh, you do have the fire alarm and yeah, but like it's not even doing it. Yeah. It's mostly up in the corner. And it went off for me. Yeah.
in his wife. <laughs> and this is the room they're staying in tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> and her, uh, this one and... Ten. That one. Oh, ten. So who's in this one now? I have no idea. Has Ron's room had anything? Not, not that I'm aware of. At least from what I've been told, I don't think they've had anything. Well, it also could be attached to Ron. They are welcoming those who are in here. They are glad that you're not in there, that they are here. They are happy that we are here. And they are saying that just the acknowledgement that you are here lets them kind of live on and have a voice of their own and to be acknowledged that they still exist beyond the physical body. That's what and they want. That's tell good. their story That's what if you want. And they want that you to know that you too live on. And so that and that knowing when you pass on from this earthly mortal body that you have, you too can communicate in his way. And do not forsake that. That's what they're saying. Uh, they want to attach that to regardless of religion. The spirit is what the spirit is. And so what's in this room, uh, the they, the we, whatever they want to associate as, um, wishes you to know they are benevolent, they are supportive of what is happening here. Uh, I always like protectors, again, the window thing, the window thing. So like, we watch over those who are in this room. Uh, hallway, also, they're kind of in the hallway. They come and go, I kind of feel like it's maybe a portal of some type. I don't know if the window's the portal, but I feel like they that come corner. and go. That corner in the hall. They come and they go. <laughs> They're not always here. They come and they go. It's a segue. This, oh, that's interesting. This building is almost like a crossroads, a super highway to uh, the supernatural. And so it is easy for them to come to go. The, and the veil is thinner here. And they are able to, they're using the word trespass, but really what they mean is traverse from one uh, aspect to another. And so they can, they can move objects. They can touch you. They can do these things. Or they can just simply exist in this space, or they can go elsewhere, right? They can do that thing. And so, what makes this block, this inn, special is that there's a certain reservoir of energy that is here, that is being fed by these type of investigations, the belief in this place, the history of this place, and there's something about the grid. The nexus feeds it and allows it and is can almost like an electrical conductivity type thing. It allows it to happen more freely here. Very cool. North side at this point. All four of us were directly in front of that bar right there. At the popcorn machine, I asked the lady, can you please make me a basket of popcorn? She went to go and make that the wine glasses slid off of the wine rack and dropped to the ground in front of all of us. Where was that in relation to her? Like she was... The popcorn bucket? The popcorn machine right here? It's like right next to the wine glass tables. The wine glass. I'm just, I think I'm asking like the wine glass that fell was nowhere within arm's length of her. No. Okay, so it nobody was, touched it. It was the third row from the left. She was at the popcorn machine. You tell me. Intuition time. Intuition time. Miss Maybell. We in the Belmont hanging out tonight. It's Stokes. Can you cook me up a burger? Or how about some fried chicken? Twist crust. 
which one would be the coolest spot? They're going to the basement already. You want to pop up on them? Say hey. Hey guys. Stokes captures a figure on his SLS as Marianne trips on the stairs. We good now? <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you. We're trying to knock this out so you can get some sleep later. Is that cool? Yeah. <laughs> Be very careful, guys. Stuff that might hurt you, alright? This is one of the danger zones. Once? One time. That's it? That was it. One time. That was it. Okay. All right. The Belmont basement. Here we go. Tactile learning is key. Hands on. All right. These are the types of sounds that you will find out will mess your stuff up, right? So everybody's going to know that if you were trying to record and you're hearing a drip, chances are that was a normal. Oh, All yeah. right. So does anybody get any type of a feeling being in a place like this? Yeah. All right. Do you feel like a neutral? Do you feel like it's, like it's a good vibe, a bad vibe? Or neutral. Neutral? Yeah. Okay. All right. Intuition's going neutral. The basement area. For now. Right? Good deal. Good deal. Yeah, so apparently there was some problems with the pipes. The uh, the galvanized lines are starting to fall apart. And it's a little tricky to put them back together. A little expensive. So they're doing what they can to try to keep it all going. Yep. Yeah. This is Carl's room. Does anybody know of a different place that is a national location known for being haunted that has a Carl involved with it? That was a caretaker? I don't want to say it. I want y'all to say it. There you go. Everybody knows what happened to Carl. Right? This Carl's not going to have that problem. This Carl's cool. This is the original brick structure. I see that. Like, come back here and you'll be like... Of the Eureka. What is the Eureka? Is that what it was after the Dindy or something? Yeah. This was the original hotel after the Dindy was moved. This is where people used to come in at. Oh, this is the old entrance. And this leaves the outside. These bricks, I was told, Interesting. are a conduit because of what they were made with. What do you mean, what they were made energy. with? Because all the bricks have a lot of different. Well, compositions different. Made. Oh. Than how they're made today. They're in bricks left. Yeah, they made <coughs> Nobody really uses limestone and stuff like that anymore. Each one of these little sediments. Is the, his car out of the basement still, or is he back in his room? I chose to go back into the basement crash. Seriously, even though he was given a room? Given a room two nights in a row and chose.
Was that cat ball going off by itself? It was. I saw it, and then I kind of saw it like moving around a little bit too. Yeah, it was going off by itself. Yeah. Not for this. Make noise, move the cat ball. There's everything on this. You can talk right into this red light here if you want. As if you want to talk to us. Do you want to talk to us? Boom. Can you say one of our names? My name is... Yeah, I'm going to come to my hair. Look, I'll keep doing that stuff. Don't be stuck in my head, I'll be saying it today. Now they say... Puts out the freaking little ice scooper. And one of the guys just now walking down just said that he felt like he was tugged on just now when he walked through here. If there's anything in here, why don't you tug on one of us? You want to tug on one of us, maybe? Thank 
you. All right, can you back away from it now? Thank you. Can you? Are you able to make my device go off in front of me right there? You saw how it lit up? Can you make the cat balls? Those little balls on the table, can you make them light up for me? Can you make the cat balls light up? That are on the table like you did earlier? light one of them up right now it's okay if you can right now are there other spirits here Are there other spirits here in, in this hotel? Come on, you can make a move. Come on, just give it a little bit more energy. Give it a push. There you go. There you go. Good shot. Oh. Are there a lot of spirits here in this hotel? Is there five spirits here in this hotel? Is it more than five? Is there more than five spirits here? Is it three spirits here? Is there two spirits here? Okay, thank you. So there's two spirits here. So one spirit is the owner of the hotel. And uh, Stokes, she totally caught a full body apparition on the heat sensor. These are the thermal images that were taken by one of our guests who was sitting in the room with us as I was using the dowsing rods. Well, they caught a full body apparition on the heat sensor right in front of me. The cat ball right there where you're at went off. They said it was going off and they all tried it out to make it go off and they couldn't. And when I walked in here, uh, I asked for it to go off and it went off and then it never did it again. All right, guys, so that is the uh, the end of the investigation. Stokes, what do you think, man? How do you think this went out so far? We had high fives and good vibes as much as possible, and we made sure that everybody that needed to have a good time was doing that, and we made sure that everything that needed to happen otherwise was done. So this was successful. Yeah, I think so, too. We definitely came here and rocked it out to go the whole town. It was crazy with the Dendy House, the Belmont, we went to Two Brews, we went to an abandoned house behind the Dendy House, the Opera House, the we, opera went. House. we went all over this town, we just took over the entire town for a weekend. Yeah, they got my man Jason back there, say what's up Jason? Upstate director, right there. Oh yeah. Newman. Yeah, I am too. We're all doing that, I ain't gonna be woke up. I'm just not. That's not one of those days. <laughs> For real. So until next time, guys, on the next investigation, we'll check y'all guys out later. That's right. Stay safe, stay sharp, stay vigilant. Stokes loves you. Peace. Like, subscribe.